Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And, of course, uh, we're in the third hour on on the Thursdays and sometimes other days. Like on Tuesdays uh, last week, we had an uh, amazing interview update with Tim Alexander. He's also one of our anchors on the live stream channel, which you want to visit. If you're a customer the last six months, you get the free password code. There's no fee if you're a customer to access all the amazing videos and it updates. And there will be a lot more coming on our live stream channel. Tim, what's the latest? Well, we've got uh, several interesting stories. Uh, one uh, is uh, the, this agreement between uh, Netanyahu's Lukid party and Lieberman's uh, party, and they're expected to dominate the Israeli election and uh, to return even a stronger uh, block. Uh, of ultra-nationalist votes uh, for Netanyahu and Lieberman in the January 22nd election. Um, Lieberman is the only joker in the extremist uh, Israeli cabinet that is more of a nut than Netanyahu. And uh, all this does not bode well for the future of peace in the Middle East. Um, Unless you change the uh, actual spelling of the word peace to P-I-E-C-E, pieces of nations, pieces of people, pieces of peace. Well, Lieberman was a Eastern European uh, Yiddish uh, nightclub bouncer. And, uh, you know, that's a piece of the action, you know. I mean... (laughs) This is uh, this is the the attitude that these characters have. It's uh, not appropriate for a senior government official in any government, and uh, a lot of people uh, around the world, including a lot of Israel's friends, have just shaken their heads at this guy. And yeah. now he's posed to be the number two person in the future uh, government of Israel. Right. And, uh, by the way, you know, uh, the, this Hurricane uh, Sandy is looking like it's going to give Obama uh, a bit of a boost. Of course it will. And uh, if that... He truncated, uh, he truncated the rise of, of Romney. And, of course, they know we have a better ground team for the Democrats to get early voters out. So they, they knew it was going to stop and, and literally truncate the rise of Romney, although I heard that the polls suggest that Romney is still ahead in Ohio, which is the the most important state, which is really good news. Well, uh, of course, I, I, I support neither. I agree with uh, Gerald Lenny that it's a, a, it's a two-bit freak show. But you'll not well, I, I, I know Gerald, Gerald can get on his soapbox, but let me explain. We had a, on the first hour of the program, and I need to clarify this, Carl Gallops, and I totally agree with Carl, I don't like someone in magic underwear. I don't like some of the things that he's done in the past, especially with Bain Capital. But we have a Hobson's choice here where we've got death immediately with Obama or we might get a diagnosis of cancer where we might survive with, with Romney if we ch- put choke chains on his Mormon neck. The fact is that if we don't vote for a Romney, we're going to immediately die with Obama. And uh, if we vote for an alternative candidate like the uh, Libertarians, and by the way, Libertarianism is based on Ayn Rand, which is godless, atheistic fascism and austerity fascism. It's not good. So, no, things aren't good with Romney. We've got, we're under judgment now, but if we don't have Romney, we're going to get full force Obama, which the second term, as I've said before, will resemble the first term of Vladimir Lenin. It's going to get ugly. Like shows like this, I, I, you're, you're not going to hear a word from me in support of Obama. <laughs> no, but I'm, my point is, you will support Obama if you say that you're not going to vote. If you're not going to vote, you're voting for Obama. If you're going to vote well, for another candidate, you're voting here's, for Obama. Here's the real problem that we have uh, in America. Uh, I've linked a story on my blog. U.S. elections will the dead vote and voting machines be hacked? Oh, yeah. And but they, my, they my response is to bears defecate in the woods. Well, there's and two different groups here now. Remember, Soros has investments in voter uh, voting machines, but also Tag, Tag Romney also has investments. Now, you have to understand, right. the powers of be have selected Romney. Obama's really ticked off the uh, so-called the Jewish community, including Netanyahu and Lieberman. 
Okay, he's really ticked off conservative blacks who basically don't want to believe in gay and lesbian kind of marriage. Okay, there's a lot of really conservative black people around. He's not giving them jobs, which you told him. You know, a lot of people thought they were going to get like the. Uh, the, 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 the tagline for, for, for the election of Polk back over a century ago was, you know, everybody's going to get a pot in there, and a chicken in their pot. It didn't happen, okay? So, you know, there's a lot of talk, a lot of, you know, and I put up a video clip yesterday which shows this. Where, what, what was the old commercial? Where's the beef? Yeah, exactly. There's no beef. So Obama is a lot of talk and no action. And he's a mismanager. He has no skill sets whatsoever to actually run the nation as a business. I really think. The positive things that can come out of Romney is, number one, if we put a choke chain on him, we can push Congress. By the way, it's not the president. It's Congress that has to pass a personhood bill. Number two, it's Congress that has to change the act that brings back the Fed Reserve so that, that the president would sign it. It's Congress that has to repeal the National Defense Authorization Act and all the other illegal, unconstitutional acts that were passed not only by Obama, but by Bush and before. So uh, the president can act as a bully pulpit and... I think under the right pressures, we can get away from Dov, Zakheim, and Chertoff and actually have a presidency that builds a nation up. But if we have Obama, we're dead. We're not just going to, we're not in the ICU where it's like, I'm walking in as the senior intensivist and I said, damn it, the insurance isn't paying for this patient. I'm pulling the freaking plug right now and that ventilator is going to stop. That's Obama. Romney he walks in and he says, hey, it's expensive. We're going to have to pare back expenses, but we're going to do the best we can to try to help this patient, and we'll see what we can do to, you know, cut the waste. So we're not going to pull a plug on this patient. We're going to see what we can do. So we're going to have a doctor's meeting in the morning to say, because the patient's dying, they're not doing well, but we're not pulling the plug tonight. That's where I see Romney. Now, there's a lot of pressures. There'll be people saying, you got to pull the pressure, the plug, Romney, because we've got to do this. Well, but okay. Romney, so, but I, I'm just let, saying let, that, let's. Know, Let's let's get off the Romney thing for a second and look at simply the technology issue here. This is what concerns me, because this this some election, of the technology of the some of the technology of the vote. Yeah, or the look, technology this election the, in a week uh, will be history, and we'll either be talking about uh, Obama got reelected or Romney uh, is the president elect. Or, worse yet, it could be up to the House and the Senate, and that could be a real nightmare. But, uh, in the long run, this country is going to have to get back to participatory democracy. And we really don't have that right now with computer, computer voting. Uh, you know, it was Stalin that said, uh, I don't care who votes, I only care who counts the votes. And uh, since Stalin's time, the, the technology has changed radically with your computer voting machines, uh, which can leave no paper trail, and can and they're programmed with uh, proprietary software. The count can be decided before the vote, and those who control the software source code uh, really control the outcome of the election. And you cannot make these machines safe. Okay, Tim, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw another fraud. monkey. I'm going to throw another monkey here. I should do it. Uh, you can only twist the vote a certain amount before you inflame the public to the point where the globalists don't want. The globalists don't want martial law. A lot, I hear a lot of people saying they're going to have martial law. They're going to have martial law. Martial law is not going to happen. Not the way they think of it. Anyway, martial law is going to happen. That. Uh, it's well, you had a lot us. of Americans with guns, so martial let, let, law might not let, work. No, no, well, no, it's not going to work. I'll tell you why. Okay, martial law is happening in stages. Right now, for example, in March of 2013, the new iPads come out where you can touch anywhere on the screen. It'll identify your fingerprints, so it'll open up your iPad. Most people don't realize that your cell phones now are queued to uh, the FBI are now in a lawsuit to actually get access to people that aren't even under surveillance to get access to your GPS coordinates of your cell phone 24-7 in a giant super database and they're actually suing with it in, the, in front of the Supreme Court right now trying to get access. Yeah, well that's why Marshall I don't use cell phones. Yeah, Mar 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 Marshall, Mar they, they Marshall can turn Law, that microphone on without you knowing it, by the way. Mar Martial Law, by the way, is already, is already here but sneaky because they don't want it in your face. I 
I would say, if you're just do an honest analysis here, the we know that there's two parties here who could manipulate the weather. The one that has a lever on the power that could do this is Obama. It's not Romney. Who's going to benefit from stopping the surge of Romney? Obama. And if Obama wins next week, you know that the Republicans and anybody with two clues is going to realize that Obama stole the election. Be either it was voter fraud because Mr. Soros has bought voter fraud counting machines, and you can't have electronic vote and have a proper election. Now, luckily, on the other side, we have a number of powers that be that want um, Romney in. They, we know, for example, that if you abandon Israel, and again, yes, you can say that, that the Sabbatean Jews are at the top and Rob, you know, Netanyahu and Lieberman are nuts, but most of the regular people in Israel are rational. They don't like this. In fact, there's been a mutiny inside, even by the former head of the IDF. So we've got a situation here where... We need Romney to be in. We need also Ryan to balance the budget. We need to get more jobs in America. We need the personhood issue. We need a better foreign policy that actually deals with things. We need people working across the other side, the Democrats that actually have two clues and want to. And we had discussions in the last couple of weeks. We had discussions with uh, uh, Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Foundation, and they actually were having meetings with the Romney staff uh, as he traveled around including Linda LaRouche, trying to say, can we work bipartisanly so we can get a credit system, take over the Fed, deal with, get rid of, write off all this debt, deal with a proper foreign policy that not only uh, protects Israel, but doesn't allow them to be a, a kind of a rogue nation to start off any kind of attack they want. All they don't which want sounds to, very good to me. And I think, honestly, Romney will do it if he has the right people around him. Uh, and we're not talking about just neocons. We as citizens are responsible for putting a choke chain on him by even talking about these things. When we talk about them preemptively, just like we talk about Benghazi, Obama shouldn't just be running for election. He should be running from the law. He should be in a zip tie on his way in a car to a prison cell. Okay? That's where Obama needs to be. But unfortunately, out. you can say that about the last several occupants in the White House. No, I think Obama is a, is a new class of, of criminal. This guy is is a completely uh, over the top. Well, I, I, and, I, I, and Dick Cheney, uh, who was the vice well, president. Well, Dick Cheney, you mean, you mean the, the minion of darkness, we'll call him. We'll yeah, call him yeah, the yeah, devil's yeah. son. Yeah. Yeah, Dick Cheney was sitting there with Normanetta, uh, actually as, as the as the airplane is coming in toward the Pentagon and saying, "Are you going to turn you know turn them back, etc." I know from my contacts that they have what's called rapid response teams that go in high speed elevators in the Pentagon. They can go with Stinger missiles on the roof of the Pentagon and can shoot any aircraft down that comes within three to five miles of the Pentagon and turn it into confetti. I have that from my own high sources. Well, we, we have, the, 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 of course we do. And here's here's the problem. Many, many years ago, we allowed the criminal element at the highest levels to, to basically take over control of this great country. Well, it's us. It, it, it's, uh, it's us. It's, but, you know, now we get the rise of the alternative media, which is why Obama wants to get rid of it. He wants a kill switch, and actually their latest trick is real sneaky. They want to sign an international treaty, and this is one of the things, just like the, uh, the Law of the Seas Treaty that Obama wants to sign, the Small Arms Treaty with the United Nations, and they want to sign a new UN treaty controlling the Internet just like they have control of the to protocols back door, for phone calls. So the whole freedom of the press. They want to backdoor it. They want to say, Deagle, you can't say anything about Islam. We're coming to cuff you, SOB. We're going to take you because you said something about some sheikh in Egypt. Even though they have no right to do so, they're going to try to arrest me. If Obama gets back in, do you think the show is going to be on two years from now or three years from now? Fat chance. Well, I don't know what you think they'll, they'll, Fat they'll, chance. they'll allow you to broadcast from your prison cell. No. No, not only a prison cell, <laughs> from your grave. From your grave. Don't worry. You, there won't be any habeas corpus with the National Defense Authorization Act. My relatives will not be dialing me unless they can say a good prayer and get a direct line to heaven. Okay? So the fact is that if Obama gets in, a lot of us that are patriots, we're going to die. We're not just going to go to prison. We're going to die. Okay? Well, so people we, that think that they yeah, took this passively look, look. about Obama, you have to understand this is the end of the road. This is it. If we get Romney, we may have a breathing room to actually re-engineer to try to get our patriots and so on together. If we have Obama, God help us. I I can't disagree with the Obama thing. I don't know. I don't know about Romney, but I'll I'll, I'll tell you. Well, one we thing. got breathing room. We got breathing we, breathing room to actually re, re recalibrate and also to reform both the Democratic and Republican Party. The Democrats need to get their act together too. They got to stop this progressive communist crap. They got to get back control of their party. The same with the Republicans. We've got to take they control of the country back from the crooks. 
Uh, one of the well, articles I, I, I linked today is the Samoa, Mexico drug cartel is a CIA subsidy. Well, you know what? I mean, the CIA has been up to its eyeballs in illegal drugs, cocaine, heroin, yeah, and everything. The CIA was created to control it. No, the CIA was controlled and by the MI5 and MI6, going right back to the British for 300 years, right back to control the drug trade in China with the opium trade and everything. Well, this many of the wealthiest new. families in Boston made their money 100 plus years ago. Well, what about the, the royalty, in, royal, royalty in Britain? The fact is, this is not a new anomaly. This is something that's foundational. People need to realize what's going on is in this generation with alternative media, we're taking the mask off all this crap. Eyes wide shut now is no longer just an anomaly. So oh, that's so weird. Why would somebody do that in a movie? As no. long as we can keep doing what we're doing and keep bringing well, more uh, people in and educating them about what's really happening, we okay. have a prayer. First off, here's what here's what we're doing. Number one, if we need to, we'll do what's called transmitting information through the in, super. It was called the supernet cloud, which means we can encrypt it even on the backbone of the bark of the beast. Number two, we can make CDs just like they did and make these little discs or uh, real to real tapes or whatever back when they had the Shah of Iran, they're trying to get rid of them, put in the Ayatollah Khomeini. They make copies of copies of copies and distribute them so they had millions that were really poor quality. Uh, with this guy living in Spain, in France, uh, in Paris, the Ayatollah, who is in exile from uh, Iran because of the Shah, which was put there, by the way, by us. After they get rid of uh, Mossadegh, who just wanted to get a plastics factory and have some petrochemicals and some industry in Iran, the Iranians, just like the Pakistanis, they want to be like us. They want to have educations. They want to have a pen that writes and doesn't skip. They want to have food that doesn't make them get diarrhea. They want to live in a house that, that's not cold or too hot. They want to be able to know that they can have a marriage party and they're not going to be hit by a predator drone. You know? Yeah. They're just well, you know, one like thing us. that concerns me about the drones is the Obama administration plans on 35,000 in this country. Well, many he already armed. has, by the executive order, and he got the FAA to already do it. So, you see, he doesn't even go to Congress. Heck with Congress. Yeah, well, you we're know, where is the executive order? And they, Can you find got the, the words executive order in the U.S. Constitution? No, no, I, he's a dictator. I haven't been able to find them. First term Obama, dictator. Second term Antichrist, uh, I call the false prophet. Because he considers himself a messiah. I mean, literally, when you look at this guy, he actually snorts and makes faces just like Biden. We should call him the Cheshire Cat Biden. <laughs> he had the cat. He, I'm sorry. I, I, during the interview, I thought the rest of his body was going to disappear and be like the Disney character. And all you see is that big, broad smile there. <laughs> it's like uh, Biden... I don't know what you're chewing at lunch, but it must have been chat, you know, from, 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 uh, <laughs> but you're, you're, you're not in the reality right now. Like, uh, Biden is, is, I, I, I think Biden is, is definitely a brick shy of a full load. <laughs> oh, there's, uh, there's something really wrong with his mind. Uh, he's participated in far too many sex magic rituals and human sacrifice. He's, he's seen too much evil. The man has liquefied his brain and is drained through his frame and magnum. One or out of the water. <laughs> exactly. Back in a moment. And we're back with Chris Harris and Tim Alexander. Chris, what's the latest on Oyster Creek? Uh, there were 26 reactors in the 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 gun sites of Hurricane Sandy. This Frankenstein was created by a harp. You know, they talk about Project Storm Fury. I, what I presented in the first hour is that this technology for weather control is is a fine art by elements within our black op operations and our government. And I took care of employees working at Buckley and Peterson Air Force Base, U.S. Space Command, and I know in exquisite detail exactly technically how they do it. I also was going to present this to, to Mr. Murphy, who was actually doing his film, What in the World Are They Spraying? And they never got down with uh, Anthony Hilder to actually videotape to do that. But I'm saying on the program, this storm was completely contrived by the Obama affiliates to delay the surge of Romney. But it also put people in a lot of danger. It killed at least 68 people. It caused many billions of dollars of damage. People are desperate now. And we, By the way, we're telling people, we're going to post the link again. We had it yesterday up. Go to the Red Cross and contribute. Do that first before you buy vitamins or do anything. 
contribute to help those people there. If there's any other charities you can verify the money will actually go to help people do it. But the situation is we have grave danger. The Oyster Creek plant, tell us the update on what's going on there because they had to go to backup generators. They have two weeks of diesel fuel. If there was any reason why they couldn't get the diesel fuel because of broken roads or other things, there's gas lines on fire. The biggest fire in, in I think, New, New Jersey history uh, occurred as well, and New York as well. Uh, the destruction is unbelievable, and we know it was all done as a stunt, just like the stunt in Benghazi, to try to get Obama rehired. So, Chris. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm with you. I was just um, just listening to what you said about um, that. I I appreciate that people um, were able to uh, uh, help out people in New York. I know you can't tell from my accent, but I am a New Yorker. You know, um, yeah, I know. Yeah, of course, you can tell. And, 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 and okay. the key issue is that the, all these reactors are sitting there, and there's 26 of them. We could have an American Fukushima easy because we haven't hardened against extreme weather. We hardened against uh, storm surges that can uh, take plants like Oyster Creek out. We haven't hardened against a coronal mass ejection or even the grid against a CME or any or even a military attack on our on our uh, grid and our power system and our electronics. We the, we know the Iranians have been testing a system for decades of doing EMP weapons. All kinds of countries have these things, and we're but, and yet, well, if I we lose station back out power, these nuclear reactors are going to go critical, and we're going to have millions of people that are going to become very heavily radioactive. Right. Before I get into we get into Oyster Creek, which we talked about on Monday with uh, Professor McCanny on on your program, I yes. think this you know, we have a lot of uh, New Yorkers who feel that uh, you know that because of underground uh, cables, they can't lose power and things like that, and I've identified that as a weakness. No, yes, you can, and I've also uh, we, we, it's a good case for preparation that, that even New Yorkers in a, in a big city like that really need to undergo. And, um, you know, my, my heart goes out to all of them and, and everything else. But, okay, Oyster Creek on Monday, I knew of a couple of, uh, uh, not weaknesses, but I say just, just because of the, the terrain of that area, I knew that there was a pump there that was pretty crucial. Now, listen, Oyster Creek is not in danger right now. Oyster Creek is fine, but remember, they, they were undergoing refueling. And it really doesn't matter where the fuel is. It's still hot, and it needs to be cooled. So it doesn't matter. In fact, it's even more complicated when you're in refueling mode. Uh, we pointed out there's, there are certain systems that aren't available in refueling that are required to remove heat if you have a problem. So what happened there, I looked at that. I said, well, these guys are going to submerge a pump, an important pump. And uh, if, if they're not careful, now, what I identified to you was that back in 1962, there was the worst of all cases hurricane, and it brought the uh, water level up to within six or seven inches of the maximum height. So they built, they built a plant around that. Well, this one, Sandy exceeded that, and I saw that coming, and I saw that it was going to be... Um, uh, even even higher than that, you know... Be, it's, it's not the first time I've sat down with, with you know, this is the, the problem with what's called the engineer and the accountant sharp pencil. They decided to cut yeah. corners. They decided to say, well, a century, there's like going to be a such and such a surge. In New York, they were even expecting a 6 to 11 foot surge, and it was 14 feet. They completely use a sharp pencil and it, and after Fukushima they still don't have the message that we now know also there's alternate ways you can have explosions including hydrogen explosions and criticality and yet we still have them with a sprocket off their bicycle not doing anything at the NRC to actually substantively in a timely manner deal with extreme weather station blackouts and in the next two years the most active cycle in cycle 24 to cause the CME to blow our grid etc and increased wars against enemies uh, and EMP weapons Guys, this storm, now I'm in southwestern Indiana between Louisville and St. Louis, and i got to tell you, it blew for three, almost four days, a very cold, uh, a very, uh, you know, 40, 50 mile an hour wind. And that was part of the broad system that hit uh, a third of America. They set this puppy up, and let me tell you, uh, I've, I've never seen it blow like that for for as long as it did. Well, uh, what do we call it the American it Benghazi? We'll call the Storm Sandy the uh, the nine eleven type event. We'll call it the Halloween. Uh, we'll call Franklin. Halloween How's nightmare. That? 
Halloween Nightmare, the October surprise was basically Benghazi in September and the Franken Nightmare Storm Sandy to, to literally stall the surge of Romney. That's what this was all about. And and the fact is So far it's worked. Wh- how, how bad is this Oyster Creek? We have a couple of now four or five days now in to Oyster Creek being shut down. Uh, is it still in the shutdown mode? Are there other plants in shutdown oh, no, mode, no, they're, Chris? They're, they're, they're shut down. They're, the water has receded. I'm gonna just gonna. I've been doing some research on Oyster Creek, also some further stuff. Now, do you remember in Fort Calhoun when there was a flooded plant? I said there was a lot of underground cables there that it would have to be looked at. And you know, remember Fort Calhoun was the one in Omaha. That's why right. it's not even running because that because there was so much work. Well, it turns out Oyster Creek also has a lot of underground sub uh, cables that could have been flooded by this. Is that they're gonna, right, but by the way, they're not just to... water for freshwater cables. These are salt water which are going to degrade them, just like the cables for the MTA in New York. The fact is that we're not talking about the subway being fully operational or safely operational. For months, because even if they put these subways back in operation, they pump them out. There's going to be degradation caused by the salt, the decay, cable lines, electrical systems, switching systems, electronics for identifying if a train's coming. People don't understand. That's probably why the mayor actually said he's going to waive the fee to go on the MTA in New York City. Well, I, I was concerned on Monday when I when I spouted off and saying, you know, for uh, Oyster Creek, um, they did lose power. By the way, uh, later on that day. Um, I was a little concerned. I say, well, maybe, maybe I jumped the gun a little bit until the next day when I saw the news. I lost power, by the way, uh, several times during our broadcast because uh, we were, the eye of the hurricane was approaching and we were getting some stronger winds and all that. But anyway, um, uh, what happened was uh, the very next day I looked at it and said, well, son of a gun. They did get a high level. They did declare an unusual event. And then they lost power and had to declare the alert. That's a little higher. That's a higher one. You still have to go up before you, before you, uh, the next two steps would be a uh, slight area emergency and then a general emergency, which is, that's a Fukushima event. So uh, right. they had two to go. But, but, but what that means is, let me just say, in terms of, it means you staff up your emergency centers. That means people had to be brought in during a hurricane to take command of, of the emergency center. I just wanted to, to, to realize what this means. People had to be put in harm's way and in, you know, in danger to get getting to a site, a facility where they can take command, and that actually happened. Can you imagine if they couldn't make it there, and maybe nobody, people didn't realize who was in the chain of command, who was really in control? You know, there's a lot of, a lot of confusion yeah. that could happen about that. Yeah. In other words, if Homer Simpson didn't make it back to the plant, it could have blown. And what we're saying also, by the way, this is Exelon, and make the Exelon connection to one of the senior uh, advisors to Obama, uh, which is, and you mentioned it before, what's his name? Oh, uh, Axelrod. Axelrod. Mr. Axelrod, Mr. Exelon. The Oyster Creek plant is an Exelon plant, so of course they want to keep the cap on this. But the cohorts of Obama will stoop to anything. To get that fool reelected. In, 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 that, in that realm, it was um, whether. Keep that thought. We'll be right back, Chris and Tim. Welcome back, and Chris Harris, I'd like you to give us an update on, on, I guess the key question is, with this Frankenstorm, it was obviously brewed up by the cohorts of Obama, there were 26 uh, nuclear power plants in trouble. You mentioned on the break that four of them actually had at least temporary station blackouts. What's the situation now with these, and did they kind of get a lesson that really they're not up to speed if there's any more storms? There's another one apparently brewing that's going to hit in about a week. Uh, and, and maybe another Frankenstorm, who knows? But apparently they're saying it could be pretty big, either right after the election. My head is, uh, four, four plants actually did come offline, you know, automatic trips. Now, listen, we try to, we try to look at, uh, at, least, at least historically, uh, we would look at the weather and say, hey, you know, it looks like it's getting bad. It's time to shut this plant down. And they didn't do that this time, the four plants, because... I think everybody was taken by surprise about the, about the hugeness of these storms, or this storm itself. And so they stayed online at Nine Mile Point up on Lake, on Lake Ontario. That's pretty far away. A, a piece of, uh, a, piece of a, uh, a lightning arrestor, which is a pretty big piece of equipment, blew off and it 
fell into a transformer, caused the short, and took out uh, unit um, uh, one of the two units. Uh, unit one. It took out uh, unit one. Unit two lost a little, but lost one of their circuits off site power, but it stayed online. But that just shows you that that was pretty far reaching. It went all the way up to uh, Lake Ontario in upstate New York, and that was directly caused by the winds from, from the storm. Indian Point, up just north of New York City, also Indian Point 3, also had an uh, electrical perturbation, uh, presumably from this particular storm, and it also tripped automatically. And, and so when, when winds are coming out, there are procedures on site saying, you know, if the winds are expected to get this high, we'll, we'll reduce power. And if it gets higher than that, then we will relax. We'll Chris, how long, uh, do, how long can they generate power at, at, uh, to keep the pumps going? Uh, is it two weeks? Is it a month? Two years is the standard time. It depends on the site, and it depends on what... what there, there, okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you the short answer, at least two weeks. But, you know, that there are also there's provisions for even longer than that, as long as there's no damage to from floodwaters to the electrical on-site systems, just like at Fukushima, their systems, their on-site electrical distribution systems were deluged with water. Yeah. And yeah, so no, no, what you're saying, them. Chris, is that you're saying if you just get a station blackout, you can kind of deal with it for a couple of weeks. Uh, but still it doesn't work because it's only partially controlling the heat generated in the plant. If you've got on-site electrical damage, it's a whole different ball of wax. You now have a toxic waste site that's not a nuclear plant anymore, and you've got a much bigger problem on your hands, even within hours of the station blackout. If you've got electrical problems or control problems with steam or ways of dissipating heat, uh, all kinds of other issues like how to vent the hydrogen, et cetera, that are being generated. So this is not... Uh, there are two different uh, pathways here, in other words. One is just a station well, blackout. The other is a station blackout with damage to the plant itself from flooding or other issues like extreme weather or an earthquake. And no hope of establishing any electrical flow path back to any required pumps. You know, this, this storm, though, was a new benchmark for Oyster Creek because previously it was 1962, right? It was just, like it, just like I sent you, that's directly from their own license. You know, and so this was the worst possible case, 1962 uh, hurricane. Now, now this this one here, now it has to be rewritten and say, well, I guess we can get a worse one. And we we talked a lot about changing weather conditions and changing, you know, the, the very bases upon which you construct not just nuclear plants, but also dams and you know refineries and any 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 kind of a, a structure, because we're also looking at seismic. Uh, you know, seismic events and things that seem to be scaling up. You know, it appears that way anyway. Well, with a limited when you, when you can see well, the level of damage, by the EMP, of, what would we do? We would die. An EMP would, would, would kill us, okay? If we had an EMP, we would not only have a station blackout, but we would also have damage to electronic control systems inside the plant. We would also have a meltdown, we'd have criticality, and we'd have nuclear explosions, plus all the the on-site nuclear materials would be pyrophorically activated to go on fire, and you can't put them out with water, you have to use chemicals, and you can't scramble people to the area because it's so radioactive that the gamma rays and uh, the other high-intensity radiation neutrons would kill them within minutes, or they become drooling, bungling... Two atomic bombs going yeah. off care, uh, in the right places over North America will take that's out... Why re that's why real terrorism for, 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 first off, one of the first things of 9-11 is you do not fly aircraft into the Twin Towers. You fly it into a nuclear plant if you want to do real terrorism on America. Period. Okay? If you're a real terrorist, you do not... You can do even take a, drive an APC in there, strap it with a ton of bombs on it, and just even get to the outside gate. And if it's got a big enough zone of explosion with RDX or high explosive material, you don't even have to get into the plant. All you have to do is just get near it. So this idea, or even have a toy plane and fly it in remotely below radar. Don't give them ideas. <laughs> no, I, I mentioned this to to Senator Daschle back in October of uh, 2001, and they then shut down all the airports around Rocky Flats because they said there's open, literally flats, concrete flats with containers full of liquid radioactive plutonium containing nuclear waste. I said, and there's so much there. The only place that is slightly more radioactive is the Bankinar Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan where the Russians made their nuclear weapons. So what people need to grasp here is 
we're screwed and tattooed, we have incompetence running our government, and we have people that don't understand just how dangerous it is to have extreme weather, station blackouts, and we've had lots of warnings. You know, I believe in the two things. I worked in emergency for years. I called it accidents and on purposes. This is an on purpose. When Obama did Benghazi, which you know they did, this, this evidence, we talked about this in the first hour with Carl Gallops. We know that the government with Obama did this. Then the latest is the Michael Moore commercials. Did you see them? My jaw dropped to the floor. I had to actually get a hoist to get my jaw off the floor. 97-year-old lady cussing. If they do, and I'm going to read a little article here that says, if Mitt Romney wins by a presidential election by a small margin, America will explode. This is an actor, Richard Belzer, right? And this lady on this, this Michael Moore commercial says, we're going to burn the mf -er down. 97-year-old woman, then they get a, a black lady on, it looks like she's in her 80s, it says a similar string of explicative deletives, literally threatening violence. You say, well, they're just little old ladies. These little old ladies look like they're on meth amp. They do not look like little old ladies. They look like they've been avatared by, by one of the senior demons of Lucifer himself. They do not look like little old ladies. They look like little old ladies. If you met them in the dark, you'd say, holy God, get me out of here. Well, you know what? I think as we head into this uh, uh, election, I think it would be wise for all Americans to, to do some praying. God gave us the greatest country on earth, and, and we've allowed monsters to ruin it. Uh, and we're in a, in a heap of trouble. And when you're in trouble, uh, the one person that if you have half an ounce of sense that you always turn to is the Almighty. Yeah, in fact, no I, I got a little. There are no atheists I, in foxholes. Exactly, I got a little, a little joke here for people to kind of get, get grasp the seriousness of this. Yeah, uh, the the praying p r e y i n g of Satan has to be overbalanced by the praying p r a y i n g of those who are real believers, the Most High God, to take action. Get up Romney in there. Put damn choke chains on his Mormon neck with his magic underwear that he doesn't follow the neo-Nazis and promulgate World War III. With Obama in there, we're probably going to have a shutdown of alternative media. We're going to have a banking collapse, and we're going to have uh, Sharia law in the United States, and he'll apologize this right into Armageddon. He'll have a martial law state here. If he says this bad, he'll do Benghazi and do this disaster here in, in, in covering one-third of the United States with a thousand-mile-across superstorm, which the maniacs with him did. We know they did it. And when I see yeah, the by Michael it, Moore, and, and, and when I was watching the storm here in the Midwest, I couldn't believe it. I thought, no, I, they I had really think created I, something I, this large. I, they tampered with nature. No, I, I know the Mormons are misguided, and there's lots of misguided people who are even in, into I call subcults of Christianity or whatever other faith. Some of them are just well-intentioned, good people, but they're just deceived. You know, uh, the fact is. I see Romney as a man that we can pray for. I see him as a man that, yes, he's done stupid things and he's made mistakes and he's compromised. But some of the people that uh, that can do right at this point in time, we need to pray for him. Pray that he becomes our next leader. That we maybe we can get him to convert so he converts to become a real Christian instead of thousands or millions of people thinking, oh, our president's Mormon. Why don't we go in and get sealed for time and eternity and take on our magic underwear? I don't think so. The magic so, uh, underwear part always gets me. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, of course, you got to remember, in the underwear is actually sealed the, the Masonic cross and the, and the symbol that you all have your heart ripped out and you're disemboweled and all this stuff. I think they need to remove the disemboweling and the heart stuff, really. Just get right with God and folks and pray. Yeah, because... if somebody told me this as a child, I'd say, you're kidding me. And as an adult, I can tell you I'm just disgusted that people believe this foolishness. Pray for America, pray for our leaders, and let's get rid of Obama now.